What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Happy Wednesday, everyone. It's Queen Sugar Day, the most special day of the week. <laughs> Uh, this is Queen Sugar Season 3, Episode 4. If you guys are new to my channel, just dropping by if you were recommended. Um, you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you. Um, and I promise, you will not regret it. Um, also, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like what you see. As well as comment down below. I'd like to hear what you think about not only my commentary but about this really, really great show. Queen Sugar. All my regular honeybees, let's do this. <laughs> okay, so this episode is called Watch No Haven in My Shadow. And y'all know we like to look at the titles from time to time and um, we know that Haven is uh, sort of a safe place, a, a safe respite. Um, so watch No Safe Place in My Shadow. This episode is really all about Ernest Bordelone, a.k.a. Papa Bordelone. Um, it is the anniversary of his passing, which is also Blue's birthday you guys remember um first episode papa bordelon had an episode um i think he had a heart attack at blues um birthday party that they were having miss uh i call her miss lopez but miss uh, miss Esber esma <laughs> blues teacher was there and it's so you know blues birthday is a is a is a difficult time it's a time to celebrate Blue, but at the same time, it really um, commemorates the death of Papa Bordelon. So, one of the things that Blue did with Papa every year was to build a bonfire. And he wanted to do that um, again. And it was Aunt Vi's idea, instead of having like a birthday party, to like combine, you know, to celebrate Blue's birthday with a bonfire, um, and they would all write letters to Papa Bordelon and put it in the fire and send it up to heaven. You know, it's a it's a it's a ritual that has healing has a healing purpose to it. You know, um, and we see in this episode everybody kind of needs to have a moment to say something to Papa Bordelon, whether it's on paper. Um, and, and having these conversations with Papa Bordelon, figuring out what it is you want to write on this piece of paper to tell Papa Bordelon to send up to heaven to Papa Bordelon is cathartic because you also have, um, real life things that are going on that in the, in the process of, of coming to terms with your loss, with your memories, um, you know, and with celebrating the life of an individual, you can work out some things uh, in your own life. Okay. So I just wanted to give that little, that little, you know, that little piece there so it can kind of bring things full circle for us. All right. Y'all know this show have a lot of layers. So it is important that we take our time and we talk about things. Otherwise, we will treat this show like it's any other show. And this show is about teaching us lessons. It's about um, seeing some things in our character that we see in ourselves, seeing them overcome and moving past obstacles in their own lives, how it helps us recognize and then move past some obstacles in our own lives okay <laughs> so you know it's important that we you know we exegete this thing you know what i'm saying we flesh this thing out all right so let's talk about darla and ralph angel y'all know darla has come back now darla um looks beautiful i love 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 
one that her hair is uh, like a lot more fuller the type of cut and style she has it makes her look just like she's a little bit older a little bit more polished you can tell not only coming off the drugs but working with charlie and having those responsibilities and that small amount of time that her and ralph angel were happy and living together and responsible parents and co-parenting and all of that it just it just it shifted some things in her it shifted out a lot of those old ways that 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 old meek mealy mouth look you know what i'm saying that old big and crackhead look she she that's that's in her past we don't even see remnants of that darla anymore really Still, this whole episode, every time we saw her, she had this look of hope in her eye. There was always just like this look, this moment where she she was always about to cry any moment. Like those tears were just like right, right there all the time. I loved how her eyelashes were, um, you know, separated and spread out. She kind of reminded me of Diana Ross in Mahogany. Just the way she was sitting there at that table at the <laughs> at the pizza parlor looking at Ralph Angel. I was like, girl, you best to work that mascara. Okay. <clears throat> and you can tell by Ralph Angel's demeanor. She's beautiful. He loves her. She has a place in his heart. She will always have a place in his heart. You can tell that he forgets and remembers. He forgets. And he remembers. He forgets and he remembers. Well, she tells him, you know, um, as long as, as Blue is in, in St. Joe, I'm going to be in St. Joe. You know, and we can work it out. There's a lot of things on the calendar. Blue's birthday is coming up, which is also Papa Bordelon's bonfire. And also Blue has a trip to the aquarium that Ralph Angel has signed himself up to take. Blue and darla want to take him well of course ralph angel um like i said he forgets and he remembers in a moment of forgetting they're out they're having pizza it's like old times with her blue you know and they playing it cool for blue they playing it cool for blue but it's clear that they're not together and you know he was like well you should have told me you was coming she was like i tried to tell you but you wouldn't you wouldn't take the call and you can tell she's stronger now. She's more self-assured. And, you know, she didn't just go back home and, and get strung out and get turned out and come back to him with some mess. She back about business. She about her baby. Okay. And she about this family too. She about this family too. All right. But anyway, she makes the mistake of saying, you know, after she asks him again about the field trip, he was like, listen, I said what I said, what I said. I'm taking blue. That's it, right? She says, listen, uh, blue is my son and we're going to have to work this out. She called herself the look on her, Ralph Angel's face, the way it stung when she said that, because we know that he's not her by his biological son. We know that, but she changed it and said, our son, we have to work together for, you know, the good of our son. This is our son, yada, yada, yada. But he still, by that time, he was, he was, he was back, back to remembering. You know what I mean? Like, I want for them to work it out so much, especially for Blue. And I can see that they really, really love each other. And nobody, absolutely nobody is giving two blips about the fact that biologically, um, Blue is not, Ralph Angel's son. No one cares. None of the family cares. Like we have just continued on living our day-to-day -day lives because why why would we do anything different? Blue is our baby. Blue is a board alone. Papa love blue. Okay. Um and, and just about everything blue does, he he honors Papa with it. Like blue is a board alone. Like, come on, let's move forward. I did love that moment where Darla discovered the plastic on Blue's sheets, on, on Blue's mattress. And he tells her that Blue started um, wetting the bed a couple of weeks after she left. 
And you could just see that break in her as a mother. You know what I mean? Just that moment for her was like, oh. But she can't come back here in this whirlwind and this storm and just and be like, that's my son. And, you know, just try to bust it all up. She can't do that. She's going to have to come back in for sure. Be present for sure. But she's going to have to take a lot of time with Ralph Angel. That's what this situation calls for. Okay. Um... We get to see Blue ask a little bit when Nova and um, Blue and Ralph Angel were in Blue's room. And she talk, he talks a little bit about um, Papa Bordelon, Mama Bordelon, and how she passed. And he misses her. Um, Nova misses her every day. And he had finished writing his letter. Blue finished writing his letter to Papa Bordelon. And um, it was something in reference to his... Mom, con the comment that he made, he was saying he missed her every day too. And that was something else for Ralph Angel to realize. Like, you mad at her, yeah, but she's still this, this, this boy's mother and he needs her. He needs her. He needs some balance, especially coming off the heels of losing Papa. You know, like, so that's Ralph Angel, Darla, and Blue. And we're going to talk about everybody, um, everybody's letter to papa board alone um at the end let's talk about charlie's charlie is still on the outs with at the very least nova um aunt vi is is keeping it short and sweet aunt vi ain't gonna cut none of them off unless they do something real real drastic um but you know in the midst of her researching and finding out all these itty bitty little bitty things about the Landry's and the Boudreaux's and who shares and how many children got what shares of what and what's happening and they cheating and you know just finding all the dirt out about everybody what their shares are what their secrets are and all of that in the meantime y'all know Prosper got an issue with his back and Prosper really kind of represents Ernest Papa board alone um that you know he's not their dad but he was their dad's best friend so it's kind of like having a piece of their dad here on earth plus you know they they've been friends the board alones and prosperous family been friends for many 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 years several decades so Aunt Vi has made an appointment. Can't nobody take him because they all busy. Aunt Vi got she up to here in cherry pie. And um she asked Charlie to take him. And so when Charlie goes over to to take Prosper, of course she's in a rush. She's in a hurry. Everybody, this is this is the way it goes with seniors. Um, but if you know like I know and you settle down for a minute, you pace yourself, you go at their pace. You pay attention and you listen, you'll learn something. You'll always learn something. Slow down, okay? If you got to take your loved one, your elderly loved one to the doctor, so on and so forth, go a little bit early or stay a little bit late. Don't be afraid to move some things around because I promise you what you gather in that moment is going to be so valuable. And um, Charlie learns this. She learns to pay attention. Prosper is in a bit of a bit of a tizzy. He's not as cool and calm and collected. He's he's got a lot going on. He can't find his insurance papers, and his wife kept things a certain way. She's gone on now. She's looking around the house. She's seizing, uh, um, uh, a, looks like a saxophone or some sort of wind instrument, and oh, you play. And turns out Papa Bordelon used to used to come pick up Prosper. You know, down in the quarter playing with the boys. You know, used to play music. She see a picture of her dad and 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 uh and and uh prosper together. Beautiful picture, beautiful, beautiful picture standing right there on the farm. And um she decides, you know, she sees him in the tears and she says, you know what, let's just wait. Let's just wait. We'll make it that we'll do it tomorrow. I'll come take you tomorrow. Don't worry about a day. And they talk for a minute and he shares with her a little bit about how Ernest was headstrong and how much she liked him and he sees her in Ernest and she he tells her that he misses Ernest every day. Okay? This is the Ernest episode. This is the Papa Bordelon episode. We have one just about every season. Okay? Here we are. So, um, 
The next day, she come to take him to the doctor. He forgets his jacket. They in a hurry. They in a rush. She go back to get the jacket, and she see there's an end, a termination of tenancy. She like, what is this? What's going on? Look at the bottom. It's the Landry's. So when they get to the doctor's office, they talk about a little of this and a little of that, and who's going to tell you about you? You having surgery? I'm going to call my daughter. You haven't told her yet? Not yet. She's got work, and she's got her children. Don't be too busy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I listen, we're not going to get into that. Y'all know how I feel about, feel about your elderly loved ones. You know, you just got to throw them in the mix. You just got to throw them in the mix. You got to find a way to throw them in the mix. You know what I'm saying? But if you let your if you let your elderly loved ones get away from you, um, you'll forget all about them. And they don't need to be forgotten about. But I digress. Um, anyway, she just busts out and asks him, you know, about the eviction. You know, what's going on? Come to find out, he... Is in the same predicament as some of the other people. They they all had was on Landry uh, land. The the farm land is being taken away from them as well as the homes that's on the land. They giving them like I think five grand to end the lease and move. And um, she is just like I thought you owned it. He was like no. They agreed to let me stay, but now for whatever reason, they you know she's like what are you gonna do? And he was like I got I got plans. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, you don't have no plans. You don't have no plans. I can see it all over your space. You're worried. Prosper, you're worried. Well, in the meantime, thank goodness for Prosper and his situation because Prosper gets called back by the doctor and he goes on through the door. And who is the person that comes out and calls Prosper's name? But Mr. Romero. Yeah, the man who fixed the car. Yeah, real sexy so-and-so. Uh-huh. And he's looking especially handsome in the daylight, okay? That beard was 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 quaffed, okay, to, you know, within an inch of his life. Very, very handsome guy. Sexy lips, the whole nine. And, you know, Charlie apologizes for not having called him busy life. And he, you know what I'm saying, like, he cool as, cool as a cucumber. He was like, no problem. You let me know when you ready to have a piece of pie and a cup of coffee. <laughs> and a horchata. Okay? Your boy's right here. Yeah, good moment. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 uh Uh-huh. So then Charlie, okay, goes over. And talks to Jacob Landry. Okay. She's in a bit of a tizzy. She's trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Farmers are giving up their contracts. They're losing their homes. They're moving off their land. They're not tilling the land. What's going on? Oh, don't blame us. Blame the EPA. What do the EPA have to do with anything? Oh, it's the, run the runoff. The water runoff is bringing mercury in. The land's got mercury in it. The EPA don't want people on the land. I was like, all of this sound like a damn lie to me. Sound like a damn lie to me. Um, now, you know, he's supposed to be the one to kind of keep Charlie in check. Um, <clears throat> so, she don't go right to Sam Landry. She usually talk to Jacob, okay? So, uh, she, you know, he was like, sit down, let's talk about it. Let's hash this out. And she's trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Like, y'all up to something. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But just know that Charlie got her good eye on it. Okay, Saints? All right. Now let's talk about Aunt Vi. Aunt Vi up to here with her pies. She's still, every Wednesday, making her pies down to the church. All right? It's getting to be old. It's getting to be old because people gung-ho get, to get that money, to get that extra coin um, to help you out. But any it, people like that aren't invested. It's not their business. Miss Effie's a nasty so-and-so anyway. So she let her know you got to be out an hour early every Wednesday because good church going, folks. Um, See, this is what I'm saying. That I wouldn't have never gotten to bed with them. If I did, I would have did it one time. And then I would have had to find me another way around, okay? But she got to do what she got to do. On top of that, she hauling the pies. The pies is getting smushed on one side. Like, she's got to get a delivery van. And and Hollywood mentions it. And she was like, I cannot afford a delivery van right now. Okay, so shout out to my honeybee that mentioned 
uh, that they thought that Aunt Vi bought the high yellow. I thought she did too. I thought about that when I saw the episode about the pies in the kitchen and the manager. I thought the manager was gone and Vi was the manager now. We just going to breeze over that. But I don't want to pick at that. I don't want to pick at that. But shout out to my honeybee who pointed that out. I, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I picked up what you was putting down. Okay. So, um, Hollywood was like, well, I, you ain't, ain't nobody said you had to buy the truck. So she let him go on, take the pies, come to find out the pies smushed. She's in pain. You know what I'm saying? But she's, it's the great cover up. Later on, when she comes in and sits down, she sees some paperwork with, with Hollywood working it out, which is what the head should do. Okay, that's what the head should do. The head should be solving problems. The head should be trying to run ahead and fix things and make things easier for you and better for the family and that type of thing. And Hollywood is the head. Y'all already know how I feel about Hollywood. Okay, y'all already know how I feel about Hollywood. Hollywood's my boo. All right. Yes, I lust after Remy. Yes, I lust after Ralph Angel. But Hollywood got my heart. Okay. All right. So, you know, he's trying to explain it to her. I found this older truck. It's going to take a couple hundred dollars. We're going to put a sign on the side. And she is just, she's saying no. But at the same time, her face, she wants the help. She wants to accept the help. But with a lot of women once you've been wounded once you've been stung it's very very difficult to put to to jump all in you might put a pinky toe in that joker but you ain't all in and hollywood is like no we in this together you you you're wearing yourself out you gotta have to give somewhere well you know um whatever her ex-husband is low down dirty shame um bought this house for me and every day he never let me forget it and hollywood was like that 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 joker and this man right here this black king right here we ain't nothing alike they ain't we we ain't we ain't nothing alike so don't even put us together like that and you know what's the point in having this money if if i can't do it for you if i can't help for you if i can't make things better for you and my family like what's up and she is she got this like really dopish look in her eye. You know what I'm saying? She want the help. She want to trust the help. She, but she don't want nobody to say, remember that time I gave you? Okay, but you'll take the bull crap from Effie. You'll take the bull crap from Sister Effie, but you won't take this little piece of change from Hollywood. And you know Hollywood love you. You know Hollywood would, would part the sea. And if he couldn't part it, he found a way to get on top of that water and, and ski over to you, Aunt Vi. The man loves you. The man loves you. It's time to release it. Bag lady, you gonna hurt your back. Dragging all those bags like that. And I guess nobody ever told you. All you must hold on to is you, is you, is you. Okay, let it go, on Vi. Let it go. Okay? All right. Let's talk about Nova. Nova got writer's block. She just, uh, she don't know what to do. I go through this a lot too. Like, even when doing my videos, it's like you got so many ideas, so many things that's going through your mind, but nothing settles in your spirit. Like, nothing connects with your spirit. You know it when you connect with it. But as, if you don't have that connection, it's very difficult for you to sit down and just try to write something or do a video or put something together because it don't connect with your spirit. And this is where Nova is. She is having writer's block, which ain't I told her she black. She don't have the option of, be, of being blocked up. Okay. <clears throat> then we see her talk to Remy on the farm. Remy is as you guys know a professor and he is teaching his class out there on the border loan farm it's going to be hands on real real cute now you guys already know i had my suspicions about um remy and nova and the looks they was giving each other last season while she was washing dishes after a dinner party at her house okay and i'm seeing some of the same things now now we're not gonna unpack this nova remy situation right now 
Not at this moment. We not going to unpack it. We going to wait a minute. We going to wait to at least the next episode to unpack this because I don't want this all about Papa today and I don't want to get caught up in that, but I'm going to let y'all know right now, I don't like what I'm seeing. Okay? And I'm going to need this ish to be done a certain type of way in order for me to be able to chew it and swallow it and get it down. Okay? So, I already know. I already know. Okay. Well, in this opportunity to talk to, to Remy and she's looking over the farm and going through things, you know, just trying to, to just have a moment. You know, everybody, like I said, is trying to write their letter and live their lives, write their letter to Papa Bordelon and live their lives and just, just trying to connect with something and figure it out. What am I going to write? What do I want to say? What do I want to do? You know, as far as the Papa Bordelon situation where she finds a, um, a fishing tackle box. And um, she talks about this incident where when she was 10 was the last time she went fishing with um, with Papa and how they stopped at a podunk store and he went in when he came out his lip was bloody. And say he never talked about it, they never discussed it, but she could tell by the look on his eye, in, his, in the men's eye, the smug look that something had happened and she could tell by the look in her daddy's eye that he wanted to kill them all. And it's this moment, it's this moment where... She she realizes what it is she wants to write. There is a there is a a a connection that happens with being with Papa's things and remembering those memories coming back up and those feelings. You know, it, it was just like bam. She knew what she wanted to do. She knew how she wanted to do it. She knew what it was she needed to write and what it was that we needed to hear and see as readers. It was just like that. Okay? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right? So, we're also going to talk about Micah and Davis. Micah come, Davis comes over to pick up Micah. They're going to go out and hang out. The bros. Um, you can tell he got something he want to ask Charlie about. But uh, uh, whatever it is, he can't just outright say it. But he's got a real sheepish way look about him too. And you, you can tell. You can tell that um, something's going on. So... Uh, he and Michael go and play games, and later on when they in traffic. Now, he done got a couple of phone calls. Later on when they in traffic, he takes a deep breath, and he just starts talking about Papa. You know, Ernest meant a lot more to me than anybody knew. He was more like a father to me than my own father. He taught me a lot about love and being a dad and, and you know, just. And, and Michael was like, really? He was like, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, you know. Then he takes a deep breath and he lets Micah know that Micah, he has a daughter, okay, and Micah has a sister, and that she's 13 years old, and that it was from an indiscretion, okay, an affair that he had on Charlie, and Micah wants to know if Charlie knows, and we find out that Charlie doesn't know. It's a lot for Micah. It's a lot for Micah. He's just like, I made a mistake, but she's not a mistake. The little girl's name is Tia. Her mama done passed on. Um, but she's not a mistake. And I'm, you know, I just want you to, first of all, I don't know why you thought he was just going to eat that Davis. Eat it and just, and be like, oh, that was pretty tasty. That was delicious. Please, sir, may I have another? No, that is a big, big, big thing. He's going to choke on it. If you don't give him a minute to process, he's going to choke on it. Michael gets out of the car and, and runs, walks off, goes down the street. And this is one of the first times we've seen this season that Micah kind of acts out a little bit. Um, it wasn't really acting out, but he just, you know, it just, it was too much. He had to get out of that truck. Micah, Micah, we can just talk about this. You've had a minute with this, Davis. You might want to give your son a minute too. Okay. He, he hurt for his mama. Um, and, you know, uh, we hadn't really talked about what Davis did since season one. We haven't really brought it back up. Okay. Micah's been feeling like, you know, daddy, 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 daddy's on my side and and, and that he can use daddy to, to help with mama. But you don't realize daddy's got some flaws too, right along with mama. Okay. And this is a, an immediate confrontation of those feelings <laughs> of that reality. Okay. And, 
yeah so we get to the um bonfire and it is of course a, a a beautiful moment of course all the siblings are there aunt vi hollywood prosper remy you know the important core family members um in, in the borderline clan and um blue is in charge um darla was not allowed to come so darla is not there but uh, blue is in charge you know this this she they're they're letting blue spearhead it and um it was a really really emotional moment i'm not going to talk about some of the things that blue um was saying because y'all know how i get y'all know how i get i will break up you know it's hard for me to really think about it but just when he was just talking about how um it was around his birthday that Papa passed, and um, this is was his way of just talking to Papa and letting him know how much he missed him and loved him. I was just like, oh, don't do this. Don't do this, Ava. So each one walked up and put their note in the fire, and as they put their note in the fire, um, we hear the narration in their voice of what the note said. Micah said, um, I wish I had more time with you. Um, Nova note said, um, our story will live on. Okay. Because she's going to write about, um, Papa, the land living in, in New Orleans, you know, living in the parish. I mean, it's going to be a great story. Um, Vi wrote, thank you for taking care of me. Okay. Because Papa Bordelon, Ernest was the only man that, um took care of her and saw about her and then throw it back up in her face okay so she wanted to let him know let him know i appreciate all you did for me i thank you okay um charlie was for me the most touching of all because my heart goes out to prosper you know to raise children and to be such a good individual and to not have anyone um it just breaks my heart and um those few days spending time with prosper um charlie got a chance to know exactly how important prosper was to her father and she realized that they took care of each other and so her note said um i'll take care of him which i thought was just absolutely beautiful you know and then um ralph angels was um i'm raising him in pop's name you know meaning blue you know and i hope this is sort of the end of you know this conversation this attitude like blue 